Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Thank you and welcome back to the channel. We reached a thousand subscribers on Good Friday. Thank everyone so much for subscribing and your thumbs up and all your wonderful comments. So I'm here today with Franco Mangrini and Franco is the owner of Mama Silvia's Restaurant here in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. Franco, thank you for having us today. Thank you for having me. Yes. So Franco, tell people um, where you're from, how you, you came to be in the restaurant business, and, and why you even do this. Well, let's make a long story short if I can. Um, uh, I'm a Florentine from Tuscany, Italy. Uh, on my mother's side, the family goes to the 11th century, so I'm a real Florentine. And I've been living in Florence for 24 years. I'm 65, then 21 years in the States and 20 years traveling. How I got here, it's a funny story because I was living in Alaska where I was doing consulting for restaurants. And my mother, I have a brother who lives here and my mother came here uh, to Ecuador, but they were living in, in Manta. And to make a long story short, she wasn't feeling well. I'm the baby. I, I'm the baby of the three sons. She started calling me and from Alaska. I flew here. And a friend of mine in Alaska said, bring your mother to the Bali on longevity, Vilcabamba. And so I came here and while I was taking care of my mother, uh, I basically was bored to death, and so I decided uh, to open a restaurant. I've been in the restaurant business since I'm 15. I started washing dishes at 15. And I opened Mama Silvia 12 years ago. We opened for four years. Then I got sick for an allergic reaction to antibiotic. And then four years ago, I decided to try again to see if I still had the passion to deal with customer and client, people in restaurant business understand what I mean. And yes, I did. And actually, it's a joke that I say, you know, this Mama Silvia fought the vengeance because I moved in four locations. So we got here and why do this? First of all, because uh, I will never be able to be a, a good retired person. I will get really bored. And uh, also because as everywhere else in the world, you know, there is unemployment and you need to create jobs. And it's my way of contributing to the Equatorian community by creating jobs. Um, where I learned to cook, I learned from my mother. My mother was born in 1924. She learned from her grandmother. So basically I cook like, uh, the first restaurant I opened was in New York in 1988, it was called Al Bacio. And the best compliment I received all my life was an executive chef in New York that told me that my food was early 20th century Italian food. Uh, my food is, is gourmet in a way, but it's, I like to call it Italian gourmet comfort food because uh, actually it's you know, home food. And uh, the story goes that my mother was the third woman who got divorced in the history of Italy. I was uh, 80 years old. She had three sons, she worked three jobs, six days a week. The only day that she, has off, she had off was Sunday. And basically I was, sorry for my French, the prep bitch. I was peeling, cleaning, and then when I found myself uh, in the real world, because I ran away from home, I was 16, I just started washing dishes and then they moved me to a stove and the story goes. And I, I got here, really happy to be here, by the way. So uh, Franco's mama um, lived here in Vilcabama way before we got here. And uh, she's been gone now about two years? Two years when she we she came from Italy, the doctor told her that she had two years to live. She was uh, 86 
she left 97 after a year and a half of living here and that's true must be the water, must be the energy, whatever it is. She lived nine years more of what the doctor said. And actually, uh, what uh, killed her, because body-wise she was healthy and the gerontologist told us she could have lived 10 years more, was the lockdown. Yeah, I, and we used to see her at the old restaurant, you know, every once in a while she'd be out front uh, enjoying the, the public and the view, et cetera. And so she, I, th I think she probably did quite well here. Oh, she was the best PR that I had, you know, people who loved her, especially her World War II history, because she was a partisan. Mm -hmm. And um, the great thing about Bicabamba, and the great thing was mother spoke English, Spanish, French, and Italian, was that being here, a small community and uh, Equatorian are really, they really care about elderly people. So for me it's been a big help because I would go like to the tailor lady and she would go like, oh, she went to the pharmacy to see Gisela. I would go to the pharmacy, she would tell me, oh, she went to the heart store to see Carmita. And I went to Carmita, she's calling her a Wilma. So, Basically, the community was taking care of her. And the ones who cuts my hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. mine too. <laughs> yeah, yours too. That's why we're so handsome. Vilma does a good <clears throat> job. Yeah. I don't see Vilma often enough, but I should. So I, your mom's been a big influence on the restaurant. And I think this location really has been dedicated to her and to... Uh, well, actually, uh, the, I'm really fond and love this place because actually it's been, it took me 61 years to understand that I'm not good to have partners or work with my family. So this literally, I opened 17 restaurants in my life, but this is like the 17th and it's really, I did everything. I uh, guide this poor painter to paint all the walls as a true restaurant, one third is dining room, two third is prep, kitchen. We actually have a dishwasher station. People that does, does not live in Ecuador cannot understand that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's Tuscany as the color of Tuscany. Actually, this is the last view, the view of the last house that my mother had in Tuscany. I just took pictures, put them together. Just and the painter, you. yeah, the hills, center Tuscany near the ocean that is over there. So tell us a little more about your food. What, what kind of dishes can people expect when they come to your restaurant? Well, um, as a good Italian, you know, big part of our menu is pasta. And I'm proud to say we do our fresh pasta in home. We had six different ravioli, mushroom, meat, salmon, uh, shrimp, and another one that I forgot. But uh, then we have fettuccine, angel hair, we do all our lasagnas. Uh, but then again, we go back to other recipes, like uh, tomorrow I'm gonna do a chicken liver pate from Florence. I'm actually going to change the menu and improve the menu. We already have 75 items in the menu. We have uh, salmon, grouper, pork, lamb, uh, beef, and uh, mostly our recipe from Tuscany. We import uh, good Italian food, there is a saying in Italy, good Italian food, it's easy, Italian ingredients. So we import most of our ingredients from Italy and we're like a surprise in, in Southern Ecuador because actually, uh, Vicabamba, folks, is, uh, that's east. East from here, 50 miles, and there is the Amazon forest. So we're like in the middle of nowhere, but we are in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, our pride is using fresh products um, and uh, doing everything by hand. I have 
nine employees and people goes like, oh, your pasta is so good, what machine you have? And I call Veronica, that is the one in charge <laughs> of the machine. I call this my machine, machine Veronica. Machine named Veronica. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. So, and, and, and I understand you got a new machine though now, you're making gelato. Uh, we just received it four days ago. I'm trying to get there, but being Eastern, it's going to be a busy weekend. So from next week, um, I'm going to do gelato with recipe from the pastry chef of the King of Naples from 1860. We're wow. going back to the roots of gelato that basically was made with egg yolk. Nowadays, is we have uh, subs chemical substitute in every ice cream. And we're gonna go back there and uh, see how it goes. I'm really excited. Most probably I'm gonna gain a lot of weight because it's my favorite food. You, and you need a taste tester, right? Yeah, I know. You, you're first on, <laughs> on the list. So it's not just gelato. This is world famous gelato. It's gonna be something... Uh... Yeah, the recipe I'm using, uh, I essentially watched, there is a little place in southern Italy, in Calabria, up in the hills. It's like a village like this, like six, seven thousand people. But actually it's so special that people from all over Italy organize holidays, weekend. You have to drive like from Naples, like four hours and a half up in the mountains of southern Italy. And um, that's the goal. Uh, already we are special as Italian food. You know, I'm, I don't want to be, I am arrogant and presumptuous, so I just be myself. I think we are among the f best five Italian restaurants in the country. And um, that's one thing I'm, I'm going to put there. You know, people that think, oh, big Cabamba is in the middle of nowhere. Actually, we have the best Mexican restaurant of the country. Uh, we have Korean restaurant, we have Japanese restaurant, we have Turkish restaurant, we have Southern American comfort food for breakfast and lunch. We have a real uh, uh, Italian pizza oven, firewood pizza oven in La Casetta. We have one of the best French bakery of the country. So it's funny how in such a small village, you know, all this ethnicity, all these people that came here, we're fortunate because uh, as most restaurant owners know, one gets bored of his own food. So basically every week I go in one of these places and have a different taste and they're all excellent. We're very, very, very lucky. Yeah, and uh, you know, right here in Vilcabamba proper, there's over 60 restaurants in a town of somewhere between five, 6,000 people. That's, that's a lot of restaurants, but it is a great variety here, that's for sure. You can yeah, no, and the funny thing is, you know, people with you know, 6,000 people, 60 restaurants. An Equatorian restaurant is also somebody that opened the door, put a little grill outside, two plastic tables, a chair, and there you go, you have a restaurant. You have a restaurant. But it's pretty funny, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, overcrowded with restaurants. That's why we see so many open and shut down, open and shut down. But... Uh, <clears throat> you know, I have to say, sorry to interrupt, but I have to say, everyone here in this town serves pizza. Um, but there's only about three pizzas in this town that I would try. Um, and his is definitely at the top. Um, it's a traditional style pizza. I would call it a traditional style oh, pizza. Mine is a baker pizza because uh, two reasons. One, I'm really, Susanna Manicucci, the owner of La Casetta, is from my same region, Tuscany. So uh, she has a firewood oven. I don't, so I do baker pizza. And baker pizza is thicker, and uh, I use a recipe with uh, whole wheat, so it's more crunchy than a normal pizza. But yeah, it's, um, think about it, you know, as you said, in such a small village, we have three really good pizzas places. Um, and great tiramisu. If you like tiramisu, 
This guy makes really good tiramisu. Well, lucky enough, we have really good mascarpone in Ecuador, and uh, the dairy product industry, uh, I just checked today, and there is, of course, an Italian guy in Quito that produce fresh mozzarella, fresh burrata, fresh um, provolone, and I just talked to him this morning, so I'm gonna start him bringing in that one too. And eventually, if I find the space, uh, luckily for me, the restaurant now is big, uh, I would like also to have a daily section where, you know, I sell my frozen food, cold cuts, cheeses, also because uh, there are people that live around Bicabamba and comes to town once a week. They just do all the grocery. And actually, they're really good customer of mine. And they come here with coolers and they fill the coolers with food and bring it back home. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to expand and expand the business to a point where I create more jobs. And that's how I measure my success because money is not the object at this point of my life. Even with the good genes that I have, you know, I'm 65, I live in the value of longevity. We're talking 110, 115. And, uh, but yeah, and I think that's uh, as expat, ex foreigner that we come here, you know, uh, it's a good thing if you are, uh, if you enterprise in some things to create job for the Ecuadorians. I agree. I, I think um, anyone coming to this community needs to uh, discover how they're going to add to it and not take away from it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, like John, he, he has rabbits and we tried, but uh, that's the funny thing. Here they, what, what they call it, the cooey in the States? Oh, it's a guinea pig. It's a guinea pig. So for us, we come here and, you know, you're walking on the street and there is a grill guinea pig over there. And of course, we go like, ah! Yeah. Same goes with the rabbit with Ecuadorian, because believe it or not, in Ecuador, the rabbit is a pet. So we tried, I made it with white wine, with red sauce, and I ended it eating all of it. And Bruce and Janice ate the rest. Yeah. But uh, that's the adjustment that you have with the different culture, but... Uh, for people who want to come here, I think the best thing of this country, other than being a gorgeous country with a biodiversity that's unique in the planet, uh, I found Ecuadorian extremely, extremely nice people. Then, of course, you hear crime, but uh, having lived in most of South American country, I can tell you this is the safest place of all South America compared to other countries of South America. I think so too. There are um, far more dangerous places in the United States um, to live, without a doubt. Chicago, for one example, but... Detroit. I think, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. I couldn't help. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I think, yeah, this is, you know, we feel, we, we've gone over this in our videos about Ecuador and living safe here, but yeah, we really feel like this is a wonderfully safe place. You do have to take normal precautions as you would anywhere that you live. But I think, you know, Franco has really hit on something important here, and that is that there are so many uh, different types of food represented here, and they're represented in a great way. And um, his cuisine, his artistic value, if you will, brings a, a whole lot to the community. And there are many Italians living in Vilcabamba um, there's two that have restaurants, yeah? You and La Cassetta. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course we have, you know, French food here now and just about everything. So I think you'll find anything that you could possibly want in the way of food here. Um, I think also Franco keeps a good wine selection here. He has great uh, good point. beers. Thank you, good point, thank you. I think uh, in, in, in Loja, um, the one, I have nine different red by the glass, four different white, one rosé, and actually next week we're gonna bring in the big guns that is like excellent Italian wine, uh, like Brunello in Montalcino, Barolo, Valpolicella, 
uh, and it's it's another way of sharing knowledge with uh, Equatorians. Mm, as you remember, like even in the States, in the 80s, there was not a wine culture. In, in the States, wine has been starting in the 90s. People really start becoming wine connoisseur, pairing the wine. So it's fun how, uh, for me, it's really fun uh, sharing with Equatorians especially the knowledge that you know there is a special wine for lamb, there is a special wine for fish, there is a special wine for pork and helping them increase their knowledge of uh, culinary culture and uh, yeah it's, it's uh, talking to you it's funny how we give for granted by living here us is like oh yeah but we're really lucky i mean it's uh, the diversity of food that we have here not to mention you know the ingredient if you know how to cook in ecuador you come to this town and believe you me your budget of uh, grocery it's uh, compared to the state especially for me I, I used to live in alaska to make an example a bell pepper when I came here 12 years ago in Alaska was $5. Today, $5 of pepper, I think I'm gonna get like 35 peppers or 40 peppers. Yeah. So it's, um, if, if you're thinking about your budget and coming here, I mean, you don't have to worry about spending a lot of money in food if you're able to cook at home because literally it's, uh, it's heaven here. Not to mention, most problems are fresh. We have a south of the market that is organic, uh, mostly expat, another way of uh, foreign people to bring knowledge to the Equatorians and also Equatorians. And then you have the Sunday market as well, and the prices are un unbelievable. And I think a lot of uh, Franco's customers are Ecuadorian, especially on the weekends. Um, you'll see Lahano's packed in here, and um, yes, you know, that, that's a. I think they've come to really love his food. He helps my fluent Spanish, uh, but yeah, it's uh, and I've been doing some advertising for the restaurant in the last two weeks, and I I really make a point to the Ecuadorian community of we have this town that is what is two hundred fifty thousand people. Mm -hmm. Loha, more or less, and it's so funny because in a 40 minute drive they can actually do traveling with their palate around the planet. And again, you know, look, look us up, Big Bamba on the map, you understand what I'm talking about. We're really in the middle of nowhere. And, and really going to be a big help to him because soon I'm going to teach him Italian. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, because I speak dialect, you know. <laughs> just have, I, I, I gotta have a Texan coming and yeah, yeah. teaching me Italian. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he need, a, need a Texan just to <laughs> come here and bring problems for him. <laughs> well, I hope you'll try Franco's restaurant when you come to Vilcabamba. Um, if nothing else, you've got to meet this guy. He's special, he has a great sense of humor, and he's well educated in a lot of subjects that are near and dear to my heart has a great dessert selection here. Um, someone who makes his chocolate cake is very close to me. Yeah, and also, the, now that you mentioned the funny part was um, the person very close to you, she called me and she was like, what about if I do a lemon pie? And I said, bring it on. As you know, nowadays you have to put photos on social media here and there. Basically, the cake, or, the cake arrived at 11 o'clock in the morning, and by 6 o'clock, it was gone. I didn't advertise. The person really close to you did not advertise. It was like one after the other. Wow, you got lemon pie. So yeah, the, the selection dessert, uh, other than the chocolate cake that you mentioned, the lemon pie, we had tiramisu. Uh, we have uh, gluten-free lemon tart. Uh, we have, uh, we call it the secret of Mama Silvia. It's a semi-freddo chocolate with hazelnuts. 
And uh, we have another one that, uh, see, my age shows up <laughs> that I forgot. But yeah, we have uh, one, two, three, four, six different dessert. And soon gelato, seven. And soon gelato, yeah. And I'm going to start small, but uh, the goal is to... I actually, you know, I'm being friendly with my neighbor next door, and he doesn't know that I'm looking actually for he sell, he, this guy next door sells cell phones, but I'm looking for him for another place where to move him, so I can do the deli and gelato just yeah. next door. Yeah, I'm mischievous, yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> well, eh, mi amigo, gelato is muy importante. Muy importante. Yeah. See, si? Spanish. This band is amazing. Yeah. Soon Italian. Soon Italian. Okay, well, thank you all so much for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed it. And come see my friend Franco here in Bilcabamba. You're going to love his place. Ciao thank for now. Thank you so much, and ciao.